Hey guys, Chris and Mary Coast with you again for another video. Today we're talking about modal verbs. And we're going to talk about past modal verbs. Usually when we talk about modal verbs, we need to separate the verbs into reasons why we use the modal verbs. And actually, there are a lot of different reasons why we use modal verbs. First of all, if we want to talk about ability, we can use the modal verb can or could. Now, can is a very special example because really, when we talk about can, we need to understand that this is one bigger concept called to be able to. Can can only be used in the present, as with most modal verbs. And actually, could can be used for other reasons other than ability. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But can also has a second meaning. Sometimes we use can to express permission. For example, can I go to the bathroom? I remember in school my teachers used to make jokes every time the students asked, can I go to the bathroom? They used to say, I don't know, can you? The whole point of this joke was the difference between can as a modal verb of permission and can as a modal verb of ability. An example of can as a modal verb of ability is I can speak English. This tells us that you have the ability to speak English. And as we said before, can is part of a bigger concept called to be able to. So another way to say I can speak English is I am able to speak English. Next, let's talk about possibility. When we talk about possibility, there are four modal verbs that are very important. There's must, may, might, and can't. Or in British English, it's pronounced can't. If we use the modal verb may or might, then we express possibility that something can happen in a way that says it's possible. What I mean is, if we think about possibility in percentages, then may and might tell us that there is at least 1% chance that this will happen. But may and might also tells us that it is not 100% that this will happen. When we say must, we express the idea that we have a strong opinion that this will happen. So it's something like 100% or 100% in my opinion. And when we say can't, that something can't happen, we express the idea that this thing has almost 0% chance of happening. For example, there's snow outside. It must be cold. Here we say that I have a strong opinion or strong idea that it is cold because of the snow. There's snow outside. It must be cold. His car isn't in the driveway. He might not be home. Here we can see that there's just a chance that he's home or maybe he's not home. He's only 20 years old. He can't be the new teacher. We can use can't to express the idea that we have a strong opinion against something or that something is not true. But let's remember that some of these words can be used for other purposes too. Let's start with may. Yes, may is used for possibility, but may is also used for permission. May I go to the bathroom? My teachers at school always told me, you shouldn't say, can I go to the bathroom? You should say, may I go to the bathroom? I mean, today I understand that both of these things are correct or okay to say because can is what everybody says and may is the correct thing to say. Must also has a second meaning. So must isn't only about a strong possibility. Must also is about obligation. A good substitute for must is have to. And because we can only use must in present tense, have to is a great way to express the same idea in the past or the future. Plus, must is much more formal than have to. When we talk about must as a modal verb of obligation, we can compare it to words like have to, don't have to, should, shouldn't, and mustn't. Or in American English, can't. Must as a modal verb of obligation means something like this. When a person needs to go home, they can say, I must go home. It tells us that there's some kind of rule or external force that makes the person go home. But really, you can also say, I have to go home. And it expresses the same idea. I mustn't go home expresses the idea that there's a rule or law 
stating that this thing should not happen. When we use have to, it's basically the same as must, just we can use it in all different tenses, whereas must cannot be used in all tenses. But we need to be careful when we use don't have to. Don't have to has a different meaning than mustn't, and really it has a different meaning in general. Don't have to tells us there is not a rule or law. So for example, you go to the cinema and there's a free movie. I know, it never happens, but let's imagine. So the movie's free, and you go there and they tell you, you don't have to pay. This means there's not a rule that you have to pay. If they said you mustn't pay, it would be something completely different. Moving forward, we should talk about the verb should. Should is like a suggestion or an opinion about what is right and what is wrong. You shouldn't smoke. This means I think it's bad to smoke. If I say you should do your homework, this means I think it's good for you to do your homework. So should is always about right and wrong, good and bad, about morality. Probably the most frequently used modal verb is would. Would we can use for two different reasons also. We can use would about requests and offers, or we can just use would in conditional phrases. For example, would you like to go to the cinema? Here we make a request or an offer. We usually use would in this situation with another verb, and would expresses the idea that this is a request or an offer. In conditional phrases, we also need to use would. For example, if you went to the cinema with me, I would be very happy. Alright, so the next modal verb that we need to talk about is will. You probably already know that will is used to talk about the future. So basically, a modal verb helps another verb to change forms, and will helps a verb to become future tense. There are several different reasons why we use the verb will, and I'll talk about those in a different video, because it's too much information for this video. And last but not least, let's talk about the modal verb ought to. A lot of people ask, what does ought to really mean? Well, I can tell you in a really short, clear way. Ought to means should. There's really not a big difference between ought to and should. So it's much easier if we think of ought to as the same thing as should. So great, those are the modal verbs. Now let's talk about past modal verbs. Past modal verbs. So when we talk about past modals, we need to understand that all modal verbs act alike, with the exception of two. First of all, there's a rule. After modal verbs, we shouldn't use the infinitive with the word to. We should just say the infinitive. So for example, I can swim. We don't say I can to swim. However, after ought to and have to, of course we use the word to because this modal verb includes the word to. So I have to swim or I ought to swim. But with all other modal verbs that don't include the word to in the modal verb itself, you don't use to after the verb. Here's the rule about past modals. You need to add the verb have after the modal verb in order to express a past idea. For example, I should meet my friends. If I want to say this about the past, then I can say, I should have met my friends. Past modals are formed by the modal verb itself plus the verb have plus the third part of the verb or past participle. I would have gone to the party if I had been invited. This is an example of a third conditional sentence that uses would and it's a good example of how we use would in the past. If we use would in the past with other verbs, we need to add have between the two verbs, and we need to use the third part of the verb after have, or past participle. For example, I would have liked to go to the party. This tells me about would like in the past. Let's look at some more examples. He may have been home, but his car wasn't in the driveway. He could have spoken English, but he spoke French instead. It wasn't snowing outside, so it must not have been cold. He looked too young. He can't have been our teacher. I hope this video helped you understand modal verbs and past modal verbs. Don't forget to press like and leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. What are you doing? If you're watching these videos and you haven't subscribed to my channel, like, what are you doing? Until next time, Chris Americos.